presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Phil in Puerto Rico. Hey, Phil, what's going on? Hey, Tom, doing great. Um, just wanted to thank you guys and the whole crew. Best content on the internet. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. We appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Phil, how did you find us? I just typed in live trading and YouTube one morning. Cool. I was looking for any type of live trading room you guys came up in. The, awesome. I know the quality when I see it, or at least I like to think so. And uh, I mean, you guys are just a dream. I appreciate everything well, you guys do. Welcome to the Tiger family. We appreciate your growling uh, and prowling with us. Uh, my pleasure. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Okay, folks, this is Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien. Tom will be back with you folks tomorrow, I believe. Uh, anyway, I posted the chart here of the Treasury notes. This is the largest of any of the futures markets that you folks are exposed to. Uh, it is also followed by the Treasury bonds. We'll post that one next. But I want to show you what's been happening with interest rates for the past year and a half. Folks, interest rates started to drop in 1982 on August the 9th and they went down until uh, just about a year and a half ago when they were trying to tell us that there was going to be negative interest rates. In other words, 13% for Treasury bonds back in August of 19, uh, uh, 19 uh, well, let's try that again, 1982. And then from that level, they said we were going to go down to zero interest rates. And I'll show you what that meant, because to me, that was the silliest thing that I had ever heard in all of my years of, you know, working with markets and stuff like that. So you'll be able to see it here as I bring it up. But what's interesting about this is that for the first time in a very long time, we are seeing a completed pattern. And we came very close to hitting it this morning. Uh, we almost broke 129. We got to 130.02. We've rallied only a point so far. But as you can see here, this was the big ABCD rally. This was the culmination of, of interest rates going lower a year and a half ago. And they've been going down ever since. Now they're accelerating like, like they've never accelerated in the history of, of markets ever. I mean, we've seen inversions in the yield curve, the 2 to the 10, the 2 to the 30, that have never happened before. In fact, the 1 to 2 to 30 has broken a, a low from 1896. This tells us that interest rates are going to go higher. The question is, what can the Federal Reserve do to protect this or help it? And I don't know what they can do because they've been doing quantitative easing for a long time. Now what they're doing is they're draining money out of the system at a time when they probably shouldn't. So my f feeling is that we're going to see a bounce here in notes and bonds and wh what level it's going to be. But I think what you'll do is you'll just see a small ABCD pattern that completes. This is a bear market. It's going to last many, many years, at least five more years. Folks, we went up from 82 to 02. We went up for what? That's 40 years, folks, a 40-year bull market in dropping interest rates. So, my goodness, just a 382 retracement of that would be 12 years. Mortgage rates are already at 6%, folks. Just a few months ago, they were at uh, 2 and a half, three, three 3%. And now they're at 6%. This is going to affect, you know, people buying houses. First of all, you know, look at your mortgage, what you have to pay in interest. This is going to be uh, pretty uh, good. Of course, prices will probably come down a little bit, which will help it, but that's neither here nor there. So I think that is one of the most Im very important things that we can think of as we're watching these markets uh, today. Uh, Tom uh, asked me to mention that I will be doing my uh, uh, one-day trading session tomorrow where I teach for five hours and trade to make a living. We've done three of those in the past couple of years. They've done very well. This will be my last one for the year. And let's get back to these markets because I know you're interested. Here is what we're looking at, folks. In the S&P 500, this is my opinion, of course. Remember, I'm just a technical analysis, but this is a long-term chart. You can see here, this was the COVID break. As you can see here, we exceeded the COVID break. As you can see here, we were, well, actually made a perfect uh, retracement. In other words, this retracement in COVID was equal to the one that we had between January and June, six months. Then we had the rally up to the 61% retracement, and here we're setting right here 
And this is what our objective is on this swing. It's down in here at the 61% retracement of that low from 2002. That takes you down to just around, I believe, 3,100. Uh, I believe that's it. Just give me the exact figure here, and I'll tell you. 3,118 30, uh, is the actual number that we're looking at. That is down, you know, a lot from where we are right now because we're trading at, uh, you know, 39, uh, 3,902 today. Now, let's remember, folks, this is technical analysis, and all it does is it gives you an idea of prediction within limits, okay? It does something even better than that. It's a way of measuring what your risk is on a particular trade because you always want to enter at point D. Point D is the area that you want to be watching. And these things, believe me, folks, when they move, they move very, very dramatically. Let me just give you get back to the interest rate. I want to show you what's been happening to interest rates here over the past 30-some uh, years. I'll get this chart up so you'll be able to see it. And uh, this shows you the inversion that's been happening here uh, just recently. You know, we haven't been this low in, oh, my gosh, 30 years or so. And that tells us that there's something different out there this time, folks. What it is? I don't know. All I can tell you is that it's going to be really dramatic when it happens. And when it does, it's going to scare a whole lot of people. That's basically it. Now, we're having a, a really good day, a really good day today. We're up about 500, 400 points in the Dow Jones from the bottom. We made a lower low of the whole move here at about uh, 3 o'clock this morning at Tucson time, 6 o'clock New York time. And we've rallied uh, pretty much straight up. We had a little bit of a pullback midday. But we're sitting right near the highs of the day with 45 minutes to go. And that tells us that we're most probably getting ready to get up to this area around 31, uh, right around 31,100. That's up another 200 points from where we are right now because that'll be an interesting number to, to look at. Now, the Fed could come out and say anything and do what they want as far as a change of structure. But on the long-term picture on this, folks, I have not seen – a pattern is very so as I'm seeing in stocks right now that I've ever seen in my 60 years of doing this. Uh, this is really nasty. It's actually worse than 2011, and 2011 was pretty bad. And speaking of 2011, let's just take a look at this here for um, just for a second here. Oh, dear, don't tell me. I know I kept that 2011 chart. Oh, no, this is the one I want to show you right here. This comes from... Uh, Stansbury's research, and of course they're the most uh, one of the most prestigious uh, market of marketing of systems and research in Wall Street. And I'm going to show you the chart that they're looking at because they think that we've made a very significant top here, and we're going to be looking at something that's going to be uh, substantially uh, lower here uh, later on. Now, remember, folks, we just made a bottom at six o'clock this morning, and we were able to rally. Uh, 450 points so far and we're still rallying and whether that's short covering or not it doesn't make any difference but we've had these before so it'll be depending on what Mr. Powell says 877-927-6648 Larry Pesavento for Tom O'Brien inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. This is Larry Pesavino setting in for Tom O'Brien. And we're going to go down to the old uh, history books today and look to see where we were back in 2009 because I believe we have a market that's going to do pretty much the same thing. Now, the red line that you see here is the Bradley line. Oh, we I think we have Steve Rhodes calling in. Steve, are you there? I am, but I don't want to interfere with no, your, no, uh, no, no. your presentation listen, at all. Hey, listen, you're an award-winning guy. Not, I've never won the timer of the year, and you won it no. twice. So tell me what you're looking at, my friend. No, no, no. Well, you know, I thought first I, I was listening to the uh, the intro of your of uh, the first segment, and you know, I, I'm in agreement with you that the Fed is raising rates at a time when probably it shouldn't be, you know, because all it's going to do is really make inflation worse because we've got supply chain issues. So when we increase cost of business, typically those get passed on to people, that just increases inflation. And you know, Powell's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he takes no action, he'll get blamed for causing inflation, even though it's really more of the administration's issues than it is his. Um, and if he doesn't take any, you know, if he, if he, and if he does take action, it's just gonna make matters worse. So I think he gets blamed either way. Um, but but I'm in agreement with you is that he's, he's raising rates at a time when he probably shouldn't be raising rates. In fact, I would say he shouldn't be raising rates at this stage out here. Uh, and, and with regard to housing, I think it's really a secular thing. You know, uh, what I've experienced down here over the last couple of years during the COVID is we had a big, huge migration of people from the north into uh, Florida. And, um, and and we had houses that would be on the market for like an hour. And no matter what you put as your <laughs> asking price, people would be outbidding. Now, when, when yeah. he started raising rates here, Larry, that dropped off just a tad. But uh, we put a place on the market in Naples. We sold it within three weeks. We got more than the asking price uh, for it. Um, I know others around here that have put their houses on the markets um, and have still, uh, you know, seen maybe it haven't sold in a day, but it's sold within a couple of weeks. And they're getting their asking or maybe a little bit more. So I think that the real estate piece of it, you know, is a little bit uh, segmented. It may be even different in Tampa than it is I'm down here in the southeast out there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not something that you can that, – that's not, I don't think housing is going to slow down necessarily across the board. At least that's not what I'm seeing in South Florida, whether it's the East Coast or the West Coast, not just yet. You know, I agree with you on the real estate, but I'm probably – without doubt, I am the worst real estate investor in uh, in the world. I mean, I, I you know, I've had a couple – my homes have done well. Yes. But, uh, I, the only pieces of property I ever had, I, I, I bought them in the best possible place. 
in Los Angeles, uh, Westlake Village, uh, held them for nine years, made like 10%, and had I held them, uh, they would, my $100,000... Uh, however, however, uh, however, though, I have to disagree with you. You do still have those shares in the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, I do. Both shares are still <laughs> available if anybody would like to buy them, but uh, some of that stuff in Westlake Village, uh, my original house that I paid thirty two grand for, even yeah. before they had water in the lake, uh, is now worth one point six million. I, I saw it on Zillow, and I, I, I just I was shocked that. Uh, yeah, you know. Well, look, real estate, anyway. real estate's one of those areas. You know, one of the three or four places where people can really accumulate wealth. So, uh, yeah. but look, I thought today we would talk about uh, price and time markets that I'm seeing inside the market. Please do, and, yeah, I'd like and, because you're yeah, you're so let's, you've done a yeah. great job. So please share us with what you're looking at. Okay, so first let's start with last Friday's price action. And what I show in last Friday's price action is that it confirmed a few A to B equals CD down targets. Now, Larry, what I do for the A to B equals CD pattern, which you taught to me, is I look for, as price is approaching either the one-to-one -one area or one of its extensions, I look for some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that an attempt of a bottom is forming. And inside the S&P and the Dow last week on Friday, they generated uh, bullish hammer candles. The Russell 2000 already had an A to B equal CD pattern that was confirmed by a bullish engulfing back in the middle of September out there. And that uh, low was tested and it held on last Friday. The uh, semis formed an, a buy the D point pattern a couple weeks ago when it formed a bullish hammer candle. Uh, see. Uh, I'm not sure what is. All right. So. Interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry about that, folks. So we need to, we're having a slight, I'm having a slight problem here. I think we can fix it. Hopefully it's been fixed. Um, and now we've got the uh, chart. So I'll just start over here on the very left-hand side. We've got the uh, Dow chart. You should see it in black. Uh, that was a bullish hammer candle. The key level of support, folks, write this down in your pad of paper is 30,550. Um, because if price closes below that, then It'll negate the signal. In the case of the S&P 500, it's 38.37. Uh, that is the low of last Friday. So those are two A to B equals CD patterns that I have that formed. The Russell 2000 lower left, that had completed its pattern. Its key level of support was tested last week and held. The same with the uh, semiconductor index. And if the Dow transports form a bullish engulfing candle, which they had formed as of about half an hour ago, Larry, they should form a 1 to 2.618 A to B equals CD to the downside. The NDX 100 is the only one of the uh, primary cash indices, Larry, that I don't have that has a A to B equals CD confirmed bottom pattern. But if we switch over and take a look at the NQ, and like yourself, I like to really generate all of my signal calls from the equity futures contracts simply because we're pattern recognition experts. And so it's about price discovery. And the more data, it makes it easier for us to be able to identify the patterns out here. So in the case of the NQ, it did form a bullish hammer candle last Friday. So in effect, I've got uh, buy the D point patterns that are out there for most of these markets. Now, that may just simply turn into a, a counter trend move, but we do have the buy the D point patterns. But if we do get a counter trend move inside the NQ, my price target on the way up is something I refer to, Larry, as the oscillator and change line. Now, this line's going to change as price moves up and down, so you have to use this as a guideline. But the guideline would suggest that a counter trend move should take us into the 12,264 level. Price gets up there to that red oscillator and change line and rejects it. Then we head lower and we likely head lower. At least test the hammer candle from Friday. If we take that out, then we're likely headed to the uh, June lows. Um, and uh, if last Friday's bullish hammer candles fail, and here I've got the charts for the NDX 100 or the S&P, the Dow and the NQ, what they will do is then form a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. And I'm sure during your workshop tomorrow, you're going to talk all about the A to B equals CD patterns. As an A to B equals CD pattern, what we're waiting for is we're always waiting for new information. As we get new information, sometimes those patterns change, sometimes we get uh, multiple A to B equals CD patterns with inside a larger pattern. And here what I'm showing is a larger pattern. So if last Friday's lows fail, then I would expect the S&P 500 to get down to 3680, maybe 3561. I'd expect the Dow to get down to 29271 or 28391. I'd expect the NQ to target 11161 or 10664. So last Friday is really a key session as I see it. And it makes it a little bit easier for us to be able to identify 
where price would head should those lows get taken out. Um, I see we're kind of running out of time here. So um, any questions about what I what I shared with you so far? Well, listen, you're right at spot on, Steve. I don't see anybody can fault it at all. Now, I, tomorrow I'm going to be working on shorter term time frames because, you know, we're trying to make money on these patterns. So we'll move sure. down to 10, 15 minutes and sometimes even five minute charts because you get some big swings. I mean, just since we've been on uh, on the air here, we've rallied 150 to 200 points into Dow Jones. Hey, thanks yes. for joining us, Steve. I you really bet. appreciate it, buddy. You Steve bet. Hughes, good folks. Hey, good luck tomorrow, Gilbert. Thanks a lot, Steve. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesimento setting in for Tom O'Brien. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, Larry Pesavino setting in for uh, Tom O'Brien. And we're still rallying, making new highs on the day, up around 39.12 on the S&P, I heard. Up quite a bit, uh, about 60 handles. Oh, actually, more than that, about 70 handles from the bottom. And we've seen these rallies before, so we'll see what happens for the rest of the week. But it's going to be an interesting week. I posted a chart here from uh, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Uh, it shows the longer-term picture of the market that he's watching is the S&P here. And you can tell there's a bear market there. If you look at that island reversal pattern that's been circled that we had way back there, uh, back in August the 28th, I believe. No, the August 14th. Then we had the other one that just the other gap that we had down here on the other day. And, of course, we had a 1,300-point move down in the Dow Jones here uh, a week ago Friday. And uh, the market uh, last Friday on the 16th, we made a slightly lower low today and we've rallied uh, 400 points. So it's not for the faint of heart over there. But 
This is an overall larger term time frame, just like I pointed out that we're looking for around 31.15 in the S&P on this particular swing. And whether it works or not, we don't know. But in order for us to, if this pattern is to be negated, you would have to see the S&P close 100 handles higher than where we are right now at uh, 40. Uh, 25, then I would say, uh oh, maybe this thing is all wrong and everything is going to be wonderful here in Camelot. But until that happens, one has to think that this thing has legs to possibly go to the downside. Now, since this is Tom O'Brien's show and he's uh, the master of gold, I wanted to share with you uh, what we're looking at uh, in the gold market because uh, we were very, very bullish gold here over the weekend. I'll show the pattern that we were watching. This is that uh, famous AB equals CD pattern that Steve talked about, uh, given to us by H.M. Gartley. I'll be talking about the Gartley pattern and the Gartley book uh, tomorrow's show, uh, going through the whole, you know, the whole sequence of how it all started, what it means, and why it's predictive in nature, you know, and the fact that it works on so many different markets that it's going to be really a fun day for me anyway. Hold on one second, please. <coughs> okay. As you can see here, the large ABCD pattern here was uh, completed here at uh, 1661, uh, and we were watching at 1668 as the ABCD completed there, and now the market is trading about $20 higher. We think this market has a chance to really do something really spectacular, folks, and I, I'll share with you um, what uh, our good friend um, – Billy Velton, Billy Velton gave us to us uh, about the open interest, and if, all I have to do now is to find the chart. And by golly, here it is. I'm going to show you the chart here of gold and silver, and you'll be able. Well, open interest, folks, for you stock guys, and I know a lot of you don't follow commodities, but here is the stock chart. Uh, excuse me, the chart of silver and gold. On the left is the uh, gold market. And on the right is the silver market. You'll notice this blue line right here is open interest. That means that, oh, we got a caller from Boston, Massachusetts. Alan, what can I do for you? Oh, hi, Larry. I, I joined joined in late. I didn't know if you'd talked about uh, oil at all. I mean, happy nope. to wait for you to uh, finish I'm going to be talking gold. about that next if you want me to uh, cover it. I'm going to cover the gold first and then cover the oil next. That'd be great. That'd be great because volume uh, to look light on the pull on the little pullback. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's my question. Well, the probably everybody was over in the UK going to the funeral. Would be my guess with seven mile long uh, line. I mean, I had never heard anything like that before. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll right. cover the I'll cover crude oil, Alan, in just uh, just a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks. Thank you for calling in, Alan. Appreciate it. And I <laughs> love Boston. Love the Red Sox. Love the Celtics. Yeah. Okay. Now let's <laughs> take a look here. This uh, left chart is gold. As you can see, gold topped up here. It's been going down for a long, long time. And you see the blue line following it down? That's open interest. When open interest is dropping and prices are dropping, you see the little formula there? If you have both of those, that means the market is strengthening because new players are not coming in. That means the market is ready to bounce. It's going to go against what it's been doing. The same thing in silver. And we're seeing silver already moving. I mean, even with the things going down, they started to go up. So something is happening in that metal market to pay attention to. Now, you also have with these patterns with ABCD, if they fail, they fail badly. So if, if gold goes below 1661, that tells us that we're going to go below 1600 very, very easily and head to the next target of 1540. But I don't see that. This is this open interest situation is very, very bullish, folks. And the fact that it's acting contrary to what else is going on. Uh, I think you have to pay very, very close attention to that. And so that's why we're watching it. Now we're going to make Alan uh, semi-happy because he wasn't able to talk to us while we were on the line here. But we do want to get on and talk to a little bit uh, about the crude oil market. And I get this up here. I want to do it on the weekly here because that really gives you the really uh, skinny on what's happening with crude oil because we have that uh, beautiful ABCD pattern here uh, in the uh, – crude oil. This is the weekly. Uh, the 61% retracement was down there at uh, 81.12. We went a little bit below that, but you can see the beautiful ABCD. That's that dark line right there. Folks, that ABCD pattern measured to 81.45, okay, and the low was 
110 within $30. And we, we've rallied $4,000, $4 a barrel today. And uh, that tells you that something really big is going on. Now, the second thing that's really important here is when you're looking at crude oil, you have to be able to look at heating oil and you have to be able to look at also the gasoline contracts. So the next one we're going to look at here is going to be the heating oil contract. And as you can see here, there's our old friend, AB equals CD. We make a lower low than we did in August by less than $300, and we've already rallied well over uh, $3,000 today in heating oil. This is a strong seasonal, folks. It usually goes up during September, October, November, but not always, But you know, because the seasonals can be variable by a lot of different reasons. Weather, supply chains, transportation, a lot of things that could happen. But the fact that we did this, and you know, one day does not make a bull market, but the fact that it hit that number when it was supposed to tells us that, yep, we better pay close attention to this. Now, everybody still has a car. Almost no, well, there's a few dudes out there that have them without uh, gasoline, the electric cars. But let's take a look at the uh, gasoline contract because that's a real interesting one to be watching. And all I have to do is to get it up here, and it is right there. It is. Hold on. And here is the gasoline chart. This is a chart, hourly chart. It goes back for many weeks. So you're going to see the major highs and lows that were here. And then as you see it, there is your low. The last two days has been right at the 78% retracement. In other words, from the, the low that we made back here, you can see the large A, B, C, D pattern to the downside. Then you have the run up to new highs. The move down, you see it stopped here at the 61% retracement. Didn't bounce much. And now we've bounced. You can see what's happened. And I haven't updated this, folks, since early this morning. We're already way up in here. That's how much this market has exploded to the upside. So, Alan, the crude oil market has bottomed. Heating oil has bottomed. And gasoline has bottomed. As long as these lows that were made today have not been taken out, it looks to me like we're going higher. And that's not going to help inflation. That's just the way it looks from the skinny of watching these things. I don't know any other way to uh, uh, to explain it, but that's exactly uh, what I see. And whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. But this is what this is what I'm seeing in the charts. Hey, we'll be right back, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm Orion. Okay, folks, this is Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien. And what I'd like to do is to show you what's been happening. This happens to be a 30-minute chart of the E-mini S&P uh, for today. You'll notice we made our low. Uh, down in this area here at uh, 38, uh, 38, we rallied up to uh, around roughly 39.02. We backed all the way back to a 61% retracement. We dropped just over $1,700, and now we're completing what we call a perfect A, B, C, D pattern. Now, the ABCD pattern has several characteristics. Then one is that the BC swing, the swing that is right here, is either going to stop at 382, 61, or 78. How do we know which one that is going to be? We do not know, but after the wide ranging bar that you have right after the 618, it tells you, yes, that's probably a good 61% retracement. And as you can see, for the next several hours, it never went below those lows. The second characteristic that it has that makes it such a perfect tool for timing is that if you count the number of bars from your A leg to your B leg and count the number of bars between your B leg and your D leg, your C leg and your D leg, when those are equal and they come up to this price here at uh, 39.28, and that is 90 handles off the bottom, folks. That's a close. That's close to uh, 100, 500 points in the Dow Jones in one day, and that's what we're looking at. But this market's been oversold. Remember, we dropped 1,400 points in one day, so the 382 on this back is uh, you know, quite a bit higher yet. So that's the that's the skinny on the ABCD. We're going to be going over that. Uh, quite a bit on the statistics, why it works, and why it's so important to fractal analysis from the works of uh, Mandel, uh, Benoit Mandelbrot. That, that's some of the stuff that I really enjoy doing because of the research that I that I put in on this, along with my good friend John Jameson, to explain to the folks uh, the theory behind the ABCD pattern and the fact that it works on all different things. We'll probably be looking at a few stocks, too, because I know some of the people that are coming to the seminar have been to all of the others because they're stock traders, and we'll usually pick a stock. You know, something that's in the news, Apple, Microsoft, um, could be anything, Goldman Sachs, it, whatever, whatever's in the news, we'll try to line up these patterns, uh, what we're watching to see how they line up. Do they work all the time? Of course not. But nothing works all the time. But if you can put probabilities on your side, this game is not about how much money you win. It's about how much money you don't lose. That's why Las Vegas makes such a big deal about everything because all the lights are flashing, you know, the, the slot machines are lit up and making all kinds of noises, the roulette wheels spinning, you know, and re what we do here is nothing like gambling, folks. Gambling is an event that has to be started with an event like the spin of the wheel, flip of the coin, roll of the dice, blow of the whistle, and a turn of the card, whatever it happens to be. And when that is finished, that game is not done until the event is over. With what we do here, we can buy something now, and I've already sold it since I bought it 10 seconds ago. We have control over whether we want to be a buyer or seller at any particular time. We can get out, get in, manage our risk at any particular time. 
they manage your risk for you when you're gambling. But the problem is, is the house always has an edge. You know, in Baccarat, it's like 1.3%. Blackjack, it's about 5%. If you're playing the horses, it's about 16%. Keno's about 20%. So you, you've got to play in a game that you can understand what the odds are. And if you can play with ABCD, you're going to know what those odds are because the odds on these patterns completing and doing what they're supposed to be doing, they are etched in stone, folks. We did hundreds of thousands of examples on this thing to prove that the darn thing worked. And, of course, other people have done the same type of work. That's why when you're trading out there, you're dealing with these algorithmic traders. And believe me, they uh, they know what these numbers are. You know, they know when this thing hits this 61% retracement and you're way above the opening price. That tells you that, by golly, this thing is probably getting ready to go a little bit higher, and it is going higher. That's the whole thing of, uh, you know, what you're what you're looking at here uh, when you're watching these things. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, if you'll notice here, that line that's in between there, that nine, at, that line at 39.18, that happens to be a 1.27 expansion of the move that is way back here. Right here. In other words, if you took this distance, multiply it by 1.27, it gets you to this line right here. Well, the line right above it, right above the 39.28, is the 1.618 expansion of that move. But we're dealing with A, B equals C, D. So we're going to watch 39.28. Now, we've got a... Well, we've got 10 minutes or so to go, but to tonight, where whatever it happens, we'll see you know where the action is coming in tomorrow. But we'll probably, we'll definitely trade the S&P uh, 500 tomorrow. Most probably, Treasury bonds, gold, crude oil, those are the ones that we're watching. Wheat, corn, uh, beans, uh, those are the those are the main groups because you get such beautiful patterns with them, and you don't have to risk very much. And the payoff is is really quite good. We're looking at payoffs, hopefully better than two or three to one. So that's the main thing. If you do want to join us tomorrow, uh, I will be doing it. There's a lot of things I'll be covering, folks. The 135 pattern, uh, the Mendel brought work on fractals. Oh, my goodness. And also the 382. I have 100 charts showing you the importance of the 382 pattern in downtrending markets. Just to give you an example here of last night, folks, just to show you what was happening in the Dow Jones last night as I was uh, – uh, and I don't stay up all night most of the time, but last night I happened to be involved with this, and it was uh, really quite exciting to watch. But as you see this, this happens to be a short-term chart. There was where, there was our high, uh, and now, now you can see. Look what's happening. You see how we start coming down. There's your first 382 retracement. Now, that took that took a good two hours to complete, folks, and it couldn't get above the 382 retracement. It came down and made another 382 retracement. And just for kicks and giggles, why don't you do the work yourself and measure this? Look at this, folks. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And what do you do? You rally 500 points in that A, B, C, D format, just like we saw in the S&P to get up to a 31,100, I believe, is where we got to after being at 35 and change here early this morning. So I hope that uh, I hope that helps anyway. Anyway, those are a few things that we're going to be looking at uh, tomorrow when we uh, do the all-day show. I'll be back uh, to my regular show on Wednesday. I believe Tom will be here uh, tomorrow. We've got another segment coming up, a short one, and uh, I'll try to uh, answer a question someone had about one of the stocks that we've been watching, and that stock happens to be Goldman Sachs. I'll cover that when we get back from the break because that was something that was uh, uh, last week when we were watching it uh, was really quite exciting. I don't do stocks very often, but uh, it was in the news, and uh, it turned out to be a, a really neat-looking pattern, and I'll cover that when we get back. So let's, uh, let's take a little break here, pay a few bills, and we'll be back uh, for the Tom O'Brien Show. Larry Pesavento sitting in for him. Tom will be back tomorrow. And we'll be right back in just a few minutes talking about Goldman Sachs.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back. Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien. This is the chart of Goldman Sachs. You'll notice these two little saucer-shaped things. This is a cycle finder. In other words, it finds the cycle from this point to this point. And in order for this pattern to be perfect, it has to come really, really close to where that is. So there's where your high comes in. Then all you do is you measure from your high down to your low and see that's a perfect 61% retracement and if you measure from this small tie right here this took three days to form it comes down rallies up stops exactly at the 78% level this pattern was given to me by Roy Longstreet the king of the soybeans during the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and uh, he and his son Bill gave me this pattern they didn't understand what the ratios were all I did was show them the ratios and they thought that was uh, Christmas Day. They always wondered why it was that way, but they didn't see it until I showed them what those Fibonacci ratios are. I only use the, the five ratios, folks. I use one to one, which is AB equals CD, 382618, and I use 786, and I use the expansion numbers of 1.27 and 1.618, and they're all interrelated. We're going to be going over how these numbers fit together tomorrow and how they all you know, get the piece of the puzzle. But sometimes, like when you're doing a crossword puzzle or one of the one of these uh, jigsaw puzzles, there's a few pieces missing. 
Yeah, there are. There always are. But you've got to look around those and try to figure out how to get around those. And that's what trading is all about. And it's about how much money you don't make, folks. It's about how much money you don't lose. That's it. You got it. You, if you don't lose, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about how much you make. You're going to be okay if you do it the right way. And the right way is what we think is the Fibonacci pattern recognition swing trading way. And that's what we try to do here. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Hope you can join me. May God bless. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Mm -hmm.